fortunately, I kept getting assistantship. I was a research assistant, a teaching assistant, and a graduate assistant for all four semesters. So my entire degree was mostly funded from those. I started my bachelor's in India uh, from College of Engineering, Pune, in uh, information technology. And um, quite related to computer science, but I wanted to pursue something which was more related to design. And, you know, it was a kind of a mixture of design and computer science. So I went for this degree called Human Computer Interaction at CI. And I decided to pursue my master's from the US. And I applied to a couple of universities and I got through the University of Maryland College Park campus, and which is ranked, um, I think, ninth in the US or something about for HCI uh, at that time, at least. Uh, and I pursued my master's in HCI from UMD. And there on, um, after that, I am working as a UX researcher currently in a firm in the US. The I-20 amount was somewhere around 52K, um, which was quoted in the I-20, but, um, and it varies. And this is, I'm speaking three years before, so I'm sure this might have changed. Um, how I decided to fund, definitely I went for a loan, but sometimes uh, be cautious that some universities don't accept uh, loans amount as taken for I-20 and UMD did not at that point of time. So I had to manage my own funds to show for the I-20s. I thought I would have to withdraw and, you know, disburse loan amounts and do that. But fortunately, I kept getting assistantship. I was a research assistant, a teaching assistant and a graduate assistant for all four semesters. So my entire degree was mostly funded from those. There are a couple of ways how you can get these graduate assistantship, research assistantship, and teaching assistantships. These are the three kind of in, uh, assistantships that are offered by the Information Studies School, that is where, which is a school that offers the HCI degree at the University of Maryland. So um, these are the three kind of different assistantship that you can go for, and there are different ways of applying for each of them. If you're applying for a research graduate assistantship, which is what I got in my first uh, semester. Um, there are emails sent out with requirements for hiring different graduate assistants. And those emails were sent out on a common portal of incoming students. Um, the HCIM program manager um, does a great job of sending out those emails to incoming students, making sure that they are aware of all the opportunities. I just kept an eye out on those opportunities and then applied directly to the professors who have, you know, put down the requirement for the graduate assistant. For teaching assistantship, you got to ask different professors, reach out to different TAs and see if there are need for teaching assistantships. Uh, again, on the common email um, server, you keep getting emails that so-and-so course is requiring a TA, please apply. And all you need to do is apply the earliest with your best possible uh, attempt. If you're able to convince someone, um, if you're able to convince a professor of, the re of your research interest, show plausible amount of research that you've done in the past. Um, there are chances you might get, but yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's based upon your, um, I would say, how hard you try, I guess. So while I was working in 2018, I started giving my exams. I think GRE was somewhere in the month of August. Um, TOEFL was somewhere in the month of November. And my application deadline for UMD was February 15th. And my admit was given to me in May. So things were kind of late on the timeline for me. And I don't say wait for the last moment like me, um, start early. So that's my advice, but yeah. I felt the course was good enough, demanding, definitely. It, um, there were some courses which demanded at least 16 hours of efforts for a week for one course uh, for a three hour class. And um, definitely this is um, this course is very different um, uh, in terms of like, you know, not very simple as traditional course, classroom courses. 
you have um, art classes where you are sitting on a round table discussing often times half of the class is spent usually on discussions um upon learning and experiential learning focused on that and the other half of the class is focused on teaching the professor teaches you the concepts and then you just you know reflect on those um definitely i think the assignments um they keep you very occupied um somewhere i used to spend somewhere around 40 to 60 like 50 to 60 hours of effort throughout the week completing the assignments and um just you know going through the coursework but in despite that i managed to get a 4 on 4 gpa for all four sems so i felt like i could manage it choose your degree wisely because also you may get through the degree but it's up to you how much you want to learn your personal effort and so definitely if you are if you're pursuing your masters in a in a you know in a field that you are very much interested in that you like you're going to be more inclined to doing things uh, and be more more motivated to do things your own way so i would say yeah i think it was all worth it and definitely it's a high risk situation but at the end it pays off well if you do it right <laughs>